everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Welcome to the live drive of the 2022 Genesis GV70. This is about as top of top as you can get for the GV70 model. It's got the 3.5 liter turbocharged V6 motor. It is the sport prestige model. So we got all the, the good gadgets, features. We're gonna spend the next hour or so going over them all and talking about uh, whether you should step all the way up to this top level model or maybe save a little bit of cash, save a little bit at the pump and get the two and a half liter, which is also quite good. Let us know if you're in the chat. I already saw a few people in there. Welcome. Thank you for joining. And as people kind of get on in, let us know if you're here. We'll get to your chats here in a few minutes. So as I said, this Genesis's smallest crossover, also the newest, the GV70, not to be confused with the G70, which is their smallest sedan, or the, I guess soon there will be smaller sedans, the G60 or GV60 for the smaller SUV. It's a little bit of a confusing lineup, but just remember GVs, crossovers, Gs, sedans. Got it? Good. <laughs> This is a $1,500 paint option. It is uh, matter. I don't know if y'all will be able to see that, but you can kind of hear. Yeah, in fact, this color really looks like a vanilla Wendy's Frosty. That's kind of what it's got going on. <laughs> kind of cool black, darker accents. I really always liked Genesis's kind of dark. Uh, what you, gunmetal ish color? Yeah, I'd, like say, I'd say gunmetal. Bronze gunmetal. A yeah. tad dirty, so it's hard to tell exactly, but yeah. Yeah. This, I think, is just black down here. Yep. Down here, and this is a little bit more gunmetal. Okay. You know, it's funny, every day that I don't put the wind blocker on the GoPro, it's horribly I'm, windy. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, it won't be windy today, and then it's awful. It's <laughs> awful, yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll have to throw that on. Yeah. But, come around here a little bit out of the wind and see these cool We gotta wheels. look at these wheels. Yeah. These are super cool. Be easy to clean too. Only five easy spokes. Wouldn't have to get in there with a toothbrush or anything. These are not all the way through. That's what I thought that they were. Ah, yes, that's probably a good thing. Yeah. Yep. This one had a nice profile to this car. It's a little more wagony looking than a lot of other crossovers in kind of this compact segment. It's got this elongated look to it. And I've always really liked Genesis's lighting design. It's so neat and stands out. If you're following this car on the road, it looks so different. In fact, let me turn the lights on. They on now? Yeah. Yeah. Can't quite see it's much. It's not very easy to see. Well, you can but see But you can here. still kind of tell something's going on. I really like how it's smooth. The whole side here is just perfectly smooth. And you don't really see that on a lot of vehicles, right? The headlight or the tail lights really pop out yeah. and are angled and are bulb. Very I don't bold. know. Yeah. yeah, but these are just perfectly smooth and they blend right in. I think that's neat. This always cracks me up. It's like the Genesis engineers or designers didn't know whether to say all wheel drive or four wheel drive. So they created a, a sort of A4 combo here. Yeah. So some people <laughs> might think this says four wheel drive. Other might be, people might think it says all wheel drive. Is it four wheel drive or all wheel drive? Yes. yes. <laughs> kind of like the exhaust tips as well, kind of built right they into the bumper. Neat. You don't often see that kind of built in that way. Yeah, everything about this is flat. Yeah. I mean, other than some subtle curves, nothing really goes beyond the curve of the vehicle itself. It's like a cross-country runner. Hmm. Curveless? Yep. Pretty flat. Into the trunk. Sort of a high load floor. We talk about this a lot, but you yeah. can see going up to right about Alyssa's... Mid-thigh. Yeah, so not the worst, but... For being a smaller vehicle, you might be a little surprised that it's not a bit lower. Yeah. Do we have underfloor storage? A little tiny bit. And a spare tire, so that's nice. Ooh, look at this pretty box. What is this? That is your manual. Oh. Some lug, oh, sorry. Luxury vehicles often have manuals uh, stored in the back. That's kind of neat. Yep. I don't really know why, but it's sort of cool. You got some netting, some power outlets. Ooh, this clicks in. Mm-hmm. Very satisfying. Yeah. And you can fold the seats from back here, which is a welcomed feature. Oh, I love that. Very flat load service. It's like a manual lever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like you're really unlatching it there. <laughs> See, that one didn't go quite all the way down because the rear, uh, th that seat is there. But because of this nifty Genesis feature, I can actually climb in and ah. do one of those. Down it goes. Very flat, very spacious. Could you camp? It's been a while since we've done the daily motor camp test because it's been uh, too cold. Not, not quite. Not really. Not at five foot ten. 
Um, my head's going over the seat and my feet are out. So. I would say though, if you own a, Gev a Genesis GV70, you are not wanting to camp in it. <laughs> probably not. No, you probably got other, other ideas in mind. You can probably afford a hotel. <laughs> Our clothes, check out the back. More gunmetal accents here. And red interior. Look at this neat Alcantara and the in inserts of the seats and then the red piping and stitching as well. It's really pretty. A lot of recline that these seats can give you. Let's see. And you guys can start to see wow. the beautiful red and black interior on this model. Lots of lots of nice touches. This is certainly an example of, of Genesis really pushing the, the luxury envelope at $65,000. Wow. And this is 10 grand cheaper than that Landover we had last week. And yes, it's a little bit smaller and a lot less capable off-road, but the interior just really, really makes some big differences. We even have climate control back here that you can control if the car were on, then you'd have your, your fan and your, your, volley, or, um, your temperature, everything right there. Heated seats, three stage back here, which is nice, and some power points as well. That's really cool. Yeah. So who do we got in the comments so far today, Liz? I know I saw okay. Pittsburgh Man. Yep, Pittsburgh Man is here. Say hello to uh, Mukisa and Brayden Sailor. Hey guys. Uh, Ford guys. Hello, Ford guy. Uh, are you going to review the GV80? You have, haven't you? We have. We'll probably get another one here at some point. But yeah, we've we've seen the GV80 a few mm -hmm. times. He's also asking if you can do an MPG test on older vehicles. Sometimes we do, yeah. <laughs> Say hello to Nathan Salazar. Hello, Salazar. And Ford Guy is also asking if the uh, Volvo Recharge did poorly compared to the gas version. I assume you mean in fuel economy? And if that's the case, Possibly. kind of, because you deal sort of apples to oranges there. Fuel, electricity, and gasoline. Okay. Yeah. Um, William Long says happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to you as well, William Long. The Pittsburgh man is experiencing ads. Oh, <laughs> that's the first time anyone's ever mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could like eliminate ads just for members. That would be really ideal or like anyone who donates. Yeah. Ford guy is also asking to rev it up and do an exhaust clip. Okay, we can do that. valves if it, if it has that. Mm-hmm. Um... And uh, the Pittsburgh Man says GV70's interior is so much nicer than the G70. Yes. Yeah. William really likes these new Genesis models and how they look. Mm -hmm. Great examples of being distinctive and unique, but still cohesive and elegant and stopping short of garish or weird for the hell of being weird. And I entirely agree with that. I was thinking about the interior of this and it's got kind of like a, a modern... Um, 1960s like MCM look. Even the MCM is modern. What, what is that? Mid-century modern. Mid-century modern, but this is like mid-century modern taken to the 21st century. This is really nice. Every the colors are very modern themselves with the black and the silver touches and this beautiful red, red, and then the lines are more of like a MCM kind of style. I really appreciate the interior and the outside of the car i mean with that that matte white paint that's beautiful and then you have the tail lights that are very soft subtle and the lines are very cohesive and soft too it's just a very neat design i mean it really seems like they took a lot of effort into the design to make it unique and not weird yeah they knew how to get that wow factor that's for yeah. sure yep Nathan Salazar is asking if you will, if you will do the BMW 5 Series Harman Kardon. Hopefully. Yeah, we'll try to get our hands on one of those. Okay. Maybe a 530E or something might have a Harman okay. Kardon system. Cool. 540E. Moran says, howdy. Hey, Moran. Glad to have you in. Ford guy is asking what the reliability of the GV70 is. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um... The Pittsburgh man says, Genesis is what Infinity used to be back in the mid-2000s. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Infinity was definitely punching above its its weight back then and doing an excellent job. And everyone would rather get an Infinity than a BMW in a lot of cases. And then Infinity has kind of fallen off the map. 
We're trying to get a QX60 in because those are actually pretty good. But other than that, yeah, Genesis has definitely taken over that surprise role. Mm -hmm. Have you done a fuel economy test on this yet? No. No. Chris okay. Brower will be doing that later this week. Okay, great. So Ford guys, that's going to come up later. Yep. Um, and Brayden is asking what you think of the 22 Civic sedan 1.5 turbo. I think it's an excellent car. Great. Yep. Excellent In fact, car. it was our car of the year. So oh, can't get perfect. much better than that. Very good. And there is a video on that, Brayden, if you would like to look at it. Yeah, yeah. I think there should be. I think we is had an automatic 1.5. Yeah, I think we had the... the I think so. Is it, it on be this one. channel or is it on Winding Road? Probably both. Okay, great. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Um, nice. The final legion agrees with me that it that it is uh, like a mid-century modern. It's a good yeah. way to describe it. Let's head on up to the front. We'll do a little bit more walking around and then we'll catch up in some more comments. Great. All right. Another quick walk around for anyone just kind of tuning in in this beautiful uh, Matterhorn white paint. Kind of a, it's not not exactly shiny because it's got sort of a matte finish, but I like that. I yeah. like that a lot. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, people like these frosty kind of matte-ish sort of colors. It's I think I would pick the blue that we had last time on the GV70, but this one is it is striking. It is pretty neat. This is kind of an interesting character line that right at the hood it sort of lifts up. Some people might think your hood is open. Getting into the front. Again, Alcantara lined seats. A lot of seat controls as well. You can see our under seat subwoofer there, your massage function. I want to double check that Alyssa does not have massage. Yesterday I was saying, oh, it's got massaging seats. And she said, I don't think so. Yeah, I, see, this is pretty lame. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's cheap that Genesis did not give the passenger massage seats. I think if you're gonna give it to the driver, you should give it to the passenger as well. I don't know if that's a supply chain issue or if that's just Genesis cheaping out or what, trying to pull the wool over your eyes. But come on, Genesis, step up, give us, uh, give us both massaging seats. Cause then I feel bad when I'm like, oh, I get to have my butt massaged and Alyssa doesn't. Yeah. Another feature that this one has that a lot of people asked about in the last one we had, is the 3D gauge cluster, which is, I think, an incredibly gimmicky feature <laughs> that does not need to exist. I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but let's fire the car up here. Try to get you without shadow. It's going to be difficult. Um, is it on right now? Let me see. Yes, it is. I'll turn it off. Yeah, it's not really going to show you much on camera, but it just kind of adds a little bit of depth to it. And it looks cool, but by all means, it doesn't need to exist. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Which one is 3D right now? Yeah, it's on 3D now. And then it's off. Okay. On. You really cannot tell that much of a difference. No, and it's not like just it, sitting here. It's not like it adds to your driving experience at all, or even really makes it. It's it's kind of cool looking. Oh, I actually see it shuddering. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I actually see it now. The three Dness. Yeah, it looks like it's shuddering. Okay. Like, like shaking quite a bit. That would actually mess up your head a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's it's very a little silly. It almost looks like if. You, if if you were to have a base in this car, oh, you know how it makes things shake, the rumbles, the yeah, rumbles. It mm -hmm. looks like that. Gotcha. That's so interesting. And then I, I could go without sort of the the touchy capacitive e buttons. I mean, I guess you still click them. I just think it it would look classier to just have the silver on these. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll get driving a little. Let Alyssa do some more comments. Hmm. William Long says that, um, also worth noting, Genesis offers quite an adventurous color palette on this, uh, both inside and out. They and do. Personally, he would go for the green. Ah, uh, yes, I would go for green as well. Hmm. AV is asking if you would prefer the Lincoln Corsair or this. I would take this. The Corsair is fine, but it doesn't feel that special. This feels pretty unique. I think the best thing that Lincoln would have going forward are its powertrains. Are you able to turn off the traction control system in this? I believe you can. Yeah, right over here, you just hold that down, you get traction control first. If you keep holding it, you'll get traction and stability control disabled. I appreciate that Genesis does that. Okay, nice. 
Wow, Bella Dia J is in the chat. Hello, Bella Dia J. Glad been to have you in. Yeah. Uh, Bella Dia says, I got so busy moving to Canada, so finally uh, talking from Calgary in Canada. Ah, yeah. that's right. I forgot about his move. Mm -hmm. That's pretty neat. Congratulations. Calgary. I feel like the only reason to go there would be for work. Why are you going so slow, dude? The speed limit's 55. Come on. Let's go. There is a Mercedes R350 broken down. Not a big surprise. That person thought that your GoPro camera was um, a cop, like 3D uh, sp speed radar speed gun. Radar gun, yeah. Maybe just a normal gun. Or that too. One thing that's awesome about the GV70 is how quiet it is in here. It's very relaxed, very subdued, as a luxury car should be. Yeah, I definitely feel that. Let's go chase down this F-150 Lightning up here. About 375 horsepower and a little bit more torque in here. It's strong, but it's it's not exhilarating. Let's see here. You can tell this is a Lightning because there's no ex uh, exhaust pipe underneath it. Intentional? Yeah, because it's electric. Oh, what? It. Yeah, it's all electric F-150. It's a development car. I didn't know they had those yet. Yeah, they're just kind of starting to come out. I don't think they've actually delivered any to customers yet. That's why it's that's just a, a development truck. Oh, okay. Yep. Did say Ford Motor Company on the side. Yep. Huh, that's really neat. Mm -hmm. the, Pit the Pittsburgh man says 3D cluster. Gotta make extra money somehow. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> I would not pay for that. <laughs> Joey Finley and Joshua John just said hello. Hey guys. Some OGs. Right. Cool, we are all caught up on comments. Neat. Yeah, so far driving the 3.5 liter around, it's, I suppose if you were loaded with money and you just wanted to have the best of the best that Genesis has to offer in this class, okay, it's a good thing they offered the 3.5, but the 2.5 liter we had was not a bad engine and I was plenty happy with it. So yeah, it's not gonna have quite as quick of a zero to 60 time or anything, but you're gonna get better fuel economy and it's gonna cost less. So that's probably the at this point, we've only been averaging 17.5 on this drive. What about, let's see what we've gotten over the time we've had the car. Over 42 miles, we've averaged 17.6 miles per gallon. So not fantastic for a vehicle of this size. And we haven't really been flogging it yet. It's mostly just been kind of daily driving type stuff. So save yourself a little bit of money, get the 2.5 liter, maybe after Chris Brower spent more time with the car and he reviews it, he'll he'll feel otherwise and he'll have a reason to get the 3.5, but I think it's mostly just kind of why not for some people. Like, like if you have the money and you just want to splurge, that's the only reason to get the 3.5. Okay. But if it were me, I would just get the, uh, like, step up to BMW, like X3 or something like that if I had the money. Ah, okay. Well, I feel like if you were to step up with this one and get the larger engine, then you're just going to keep yeah, exactly. Time, so. Yeah, you're just gonna have to keep spending. Yeah. Uh, the Pittsburgh man says Calgary is in Alberta, which is basically the Texas of Canada, where all the oil comes from. Mm -hmm. um, it's a workers' town and also relatively cheap housing and taxes compared to Toronto. Interesting. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Joshua John is asking how gas prices are in Michigan. They've gone down a little. Yeah. About four dollars per gallon for regular. Yeah. Yeah. I think I saw a regular at three ninety nine somewhere. So, yeah. Yeah, practically four. Yep. Yeah. Nathan is asking uh, if uh, Infinity should use a better speaker brand. Mm, maybe. I've heard some really good Bose systems though, so I don't think they need to. I think maybe they just need a little bit better tuning or something. Mm. Yeah. Because they're, they're definitely some, some strong Boses. Strong Boses. Yeah. <laughs> Should I say something? Sure. <laughs> Alright, cool. Caught up 
again. Cool. It's a relaxing car to drive. It really is between the, the decently smooth suspension, kind of middle weight steering. That everything's just very vanilla with this car. It's yeah. if you want a vehicle in this class that has a little bit more excitement. I know it's a little bit smaller, but you got the Macan, go for the BMW X3. Those are gonna give you a little bit more uh, lively powertrain, a little bit li more lively chassis. This one's never asking to be pushed. And I don't think it should be. I, I respect, I've always respected Genesis for doing that. They have their, their luxury cars focused on luxury, not focused on sport. That's why I think it's silly that this is the sport model. I would never get a luxury car that's also sporty. I just want it to be luxurious. Hmm. Joshua John is asking if you saw that the new G90 will have a Bang & Olufsen sound system. I did not. It was That's just cool. released. Yeah, that should that should be excellent. I mean, this Lexicon system is quite good as well. I gave it an A in the 2.5 liter we had. It does sound very good, but that Bang & Olufsen, maybe that'll be enough to bump it up to S tier. That's cool. Ooh. Oh, we're not going to get a free on-ramp. On we can if we just sit here. Yeah bump this up to sport plus drive mode. So many people Skirt. are like, why is he just sitting there? It does definitely take off fast. Holy oh God. my God. Yeah, that did launch us pretty hard there in, in sport plus. That was cool. The gauges have entirely <laughs> changed their look. Setup. And it's holding gears really well. Wow, yeah, do you guys hear that? Pulling hard. The steering has firmed up a bunch. I mean, this is a, this is a very aggressive sport plus mode for this type of vehicle. The suspension feels like it's firmed itself up a little. That's fun. Yeah. Let's try doing some paddle shifting. Yeah, transmission's quite responsive. How's the brakes? Really? You gotta good. press into them quite a bit to get to get a confident brake feel. <laughs> but of course, because you can completely disable that traction stability control, you can you can it out so if it's snowy out or something you want to have some fun in your, your gv70 you can around i don't think it holds gears let's double check real quick was that not what it was just doing oh it does cool. what was it doing earlier uh, soft loader thing or Yeah, the, this motor is, it's, you put it into a little more aggressive drive mode like this, and it's quite snappy. Again, it doesn't really fit the ethos of this car. Because <laughs> even, even then, it still feels sort of cumbersome, sort of heavy. It doesn't feel lithe and light on his feet the way some other more sporty SUVs are, like a Macan, but do a quick launch stir. It actually has launch control, too. that's cool is the, the headrests are so soft that when your head gets jerked back, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> doesn't matter. Let's go back to comfort mode. BMW seems to be a little lost. Yeah. Nathan Salazar says, did you know that Panasonic makes the ELS systems? I did not. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And Joshua John is wondering if the G70 has a fully red interior option unlike this one. I'm not sure. You have to check the build configurator. And Genesis has a pretty darn good build configurator. Cool. William says that you make a really good point on the sportiness with crossovers. Like how the GV70 is somewhat athletic, but in a manner appropriate for a luxury crossover unlike a full-on 
M AMG. Yeah, I would never get something like an X3M. I think those are so silly. Or like an AMG. In fact, I'd be more likely to get the AMG model because what Mercedes AMG does very, very well is the bandwidth of their vehicles. You can get an AMG model and have it in comfort mode and it will ride very comfortable. Very, the whole car calms down and kind of goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. Then you shift it up into Sport Plus or race mode even better and it's an absolute animal from there. The BMW cars are not as good at that all, all, all the way on or all the way off sort of switch. Look at mm. all the planes here. Huh, some private jets it looks like. That's or pretty neat. Or at least some charter jets. Who did we have that was into planes? Um, was it Audi driver? No. Not Audi fanboy, but didn't we have like no. an Audi driver too? Was there's somebody else? There's somebody else. Okay. Oh well. The Pittsburgh man says Genesis has a great lineup, especially with the with the uh, GV60 coming out. Mm -hmm. And William says the V6 doesn't sound half bad. No, it's fine. This motor has never really inspired me the way some of the German powertrains do. It it just kind of motivates the car, which is fine. It's what okay. it does what it needs to do, but it's not an overachiever. Does this have any piped in sound? You think? Yes. In fact, you can control it, which I really appreciate. So wow. If you look here on the screen. Go over to. I don't know if this is showing up very well at all. Setup. And down to. Oh, just right there. Vehicle. Active sound design. You can change the amount of, of piped in sound that there is. Huh. So let me see if it does it here in, in neutral. So this is with it off. No piped in noise. Change us to largest. Sounds about the same. I don't hear a difference at all. Maybe it's because we're um, in park. Maybe you know, we'll try it again when we're on the road. Maybe it'll make a bigger difference. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Another thing with the infotainment, I'd like to point out a nice big screen right there that you can touch if you want, but it's quite far away. So you have this rotary knob. And I appreciate that they are using the actual knob and not the little dial that they used in some of the 90 cars. Yeah, works well. It's a little bit cheaper feeling than like the BMW knobs, but it's effective. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks sure. really nice. Feels good in the hand too. Yeah, it does. Yep. Cool. Ron says it's surprising that a Genesis would hold gear. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and Joshua John is asking if you would prefer this or the Acura RDX. Well, that's interesting because we're actually getting an RDX in a few weeks. I think I would take the RDX. It's a little bit crisper design. I really like the sound system, obviously. Just, a, just, a, just kind of hair more sporty, but in a good way. And I've always just really appreciated the crispness of the RDX. The only problem is the stupid touchpad that they have on it. I don't appreciate it, but oh, okay. yeah, we'll probably live drive that in a few weeks here. Very cool. Yeah. It's good that we're getting an Acura because they are not very frequent with their No, their not, there aren't a ton of Acura models. There's really? Only, yeah, it's just a small wow. amount, so yeah. Huh. Kind of like Infinity, they only come every now and again. Yeah. That's cool. This is kind of a fun thing if we can get the screen to show up. I don't know why it's showing up so poorly here, but it's sort of like a third person uh, Grand Theft Auto style view of the car as it drives around from the cameras outside. You can sort of drive it like that. It's fun. That's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you can switch which angle you look at the car too. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. It even shows the wheels moving and the proper color. I think that's cool. Huh. Cool. It's pretty well calibrated. <laughs> Joshua says, I just saw somewhere that Genesis finally has a standalone dealership that's not connected to Hyundai. Yeah, they've had that for a while. They've they've definitely been Genesis only dealers. And they're pushing that more and more. And Mukisi is asking how much this is. Sixty five thousand dollars. Sixty five. We can do a quick peek at the window sticker. Okay. Yep, sixty five thousand dollars. As we're sitting in this model, it's, like I said, it's about as expensive as you're gonna get for a GV seventy Sport Prestige model. Manufacturer suggested price is 52 and the added features brings it up to 65. 65. Yep, so the Sport Prestige package and the Sport Advance package, it's getting you things like the digital gauge cluster, carbon fiber trim, three zone climate control, 
Napa leather seating surfaces, heated steering wheel, digital keys, round view monitor, a lot of neat and useful tech, some a little bit gimmicky. Everything made in Korea. Neat. And fairly low fuel economy. Yeah, not great. Yeah. Unfortunately, our truck gets better than that. Yep. The Pittsburgh man just says, San Andreas. Yeah, exactly. Let's do a little bit of a walk around, check out the engine, we'll do an old exhaust clip. Even those buttons are red, that's some, some good detail there. There is the Matterhorn White GV70. I will say this is one of my favorite looking cars in this segment and it really stands apart. If you know, you know sort of thing, if you see one of these on the road. Although with this white, once it starts to get dirty, you're, you always feel like, darn it, I'm gonna go get it washed yeah. again because it doesn't look as crisp. Well, that's how we felt with our Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Classic Genesis lights. Big old grill. I could see that big grill being a little too large for some people. Yeah, probably. Pop open the hood. Take a look at this. Yeah, we'll do that too. There it is. Twin intakes for this turbo V6. Some strut tower bars, reinforcements. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. A lot of plastics. Yeah. Hey, you want to go back for some exhaust? Sure. There's a little bit of shuddering in there. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, not the most remarkable sound, I'm sure. Just kind of there. It's just there. It's a it's a soft purr. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I do like their climate control screen. It, it is a screen. You do have to touch it. Not a lot of buttons for everything, but I don't particularly mind it in this setup because it is always there. It's its own dedicated screen. Hmm. So it could be worse. That is kind of cool, actually. I, like, I do like how sleek that is. Yeah. Um, Real quick, what tier would you give the, the 22 Civic Bow sound system? I think I said B tier. It's a B tier? Yeah. It's pretty decent. Um, Joey says he loves the new uh, Genesis vehicles. The look yeah. on hell mm -hmm. on the new Genesis. Yeah, my favorite's the G90. Okay. Look. How are the interior materials? The quality, build quality, and all of that compared to uh, European competition? I'd say it's right up there. I'm personally not the biggest fan of the feel of the leather. It's definitely nice. There's nothing to complain about. I just, there are other leathers like in that Land Rover. I like the leather a little bit better, but everything, I mean, everything's solid. It's maybe if, if you give like the, your classic BMW of this price point, a, a nine, this is like an eight and a half. I mean, there's really nothing to complain about. I like the Alcantara on the seats, all the clicks. I'm really impressed by it. I'm really impressed with <laughs> the materials, the colors, the design, the looks. Like you can feel each individual hole right here. Let me put your thumb against it. This is a really neat Yeah. One thing this car does even better than 
Raptor on, say, for example, our Maverick, is drive is all the way to the right and reverse is all the way to the left. And park, you actually press the button. Um. Now, in other ones, like our, our Ford, for example, park is all the way to the left, so you have to kind of make sure you only click uh, one click yeah. to the side to get to reverse. Whereas this, you can just jam it over to the left. You don't right. have to be specific. That is a good point. It's subtle, but it just makes it a little bit of a difference. Right. Ah, Bradley is asking if I'm going to drive. Would you like to drive? Okay. Then yes, you will drive. Then I can drive. It's a nice head-up display too. Y'all aren't really going to be able to see it, but it's just a subtle kind of air telling me the speed. Yeah. Looks good. This does have uh, interior lighting. Yes, it has a nice lighting. ambient lighting. We saw it last it's, night. It's actually underneath here. And it sweeps, this is like a continuous line all the way through here, it sweeps all the way around. It just adds to the really clean look of this of the interior. It's bright, you can choose all different sorts of colors. It's a really good ambient light. Again, up here at highway speeds, very calm. Yeah. Very chill, very quiet. You guys can't really hear it. I like how to turn these lights on. It's just like a little uh, touch and oh, sort of fades out. Nice. Very calm. Yeah. There it is. Oh, let's test out the difference real quick between the, the active sound. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Let's see if you guys can actually see any of that. So right now we're on the loudest active sound. We'll actually put it into sport to hear that. Which is kind of good mm -hmm. because for those of you that don't like piped in sound it's not going to sound that different from how your car actually sounds by itself yeah it sounds a lot better than something like a kia stinger yeah so that's with it off It's definitely subtle. I can hear it, but it's it's not much. So that's, okay. I appreciate that. It doesn't sound like a ghost in a vacuum cleaner the way the Kia Stinger does. <laughs> a ghost in a vacuum cleaner. That's great. William Long says, I could see this attracting a lot of shoppers who simply want something different than the bajillions of X3s and NXs out there. I think sometimes we underestimate that kind of appeal, to be honest. Yeah, I there are definitely people who want to be different. It's just tough for me because the reason that there are so many X3s and NXs is because the X3 and the NX are both so good. So <laughs> it's kind of like, do you want an excellent product just in, or do you not want an excellent product just because a lot of other people have it? I don't know. And this is a good option too, don't get me wrong. I'm just pointing out that it's not like it was a stale segment that's being saved by the GV7. I it's, see. It's a very good segment and Genesis has its work cut out for it competing in that segment. Mm -hmm. Same thing I felt about the GV80. The GV80 is very good, but I'd still rather have the X5, even though the X5 costs more. Interesting. Wow. Okay. So overall, if you were going to give this a letter tier, mm -hmm. what would you give it for this segment? With that? Probably A. Oh yeah. Yeah. A tier, and to clarify, there is an S tier. Yeah. In your mind, correct? Mm -hmm. A is pretty good. Oh yeah, it's a great car. I yeah. like it very much. Have you done the sound system video yet? Yeah, because we already reviewed the one in the last GV70 we had. I okay. Gave it an a. Okay. It's quite good. I will be doing a members only sound system test on this one though. So, uh, you guys, you members that are in here, Josh and uh, Pittsburgh Man and stuff, if you have any songs you want to hear, just throw Joey. them in. Joey. Yeah, Joey. Throw them in a, um, in, in Moran as well. In Moran, yep. Throw the song requests in one of the members videos or something and I'll add them to the list. Cool. Great. I'll do a quick demonstration here as, as we come to a stop. What I mean about the shifter. Okay. If I, if I want to back up, it's just a super easy and then back in a drive. So it's not like a you actually have to go hit the right. through other clicks. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. 
nice sounds that it makes too when it's upset about things. <laughs> it's pretty, it's not abrasive. So I'm gonna save my seat right here as set one, settings one saved. That way Alyssa can screw it up and I can restore it afterward. Let's see if it requires premium fuel. I assume it does. Premium fuel recommended, so not required. If I owned this and I were just cruising on the highway, I would just use regular. But I'm a savage. Up she goes. How high can she go? How high can she go? She can go higher than I ever really thought she could. <laughs> Oh, that's as high as it goes and as far back as it goes. Lower that a little bit. I don't know if lower just a tad bit. Neat. Can I have any of the memberships options to request a song? Um, I don't know exactly what you need, mean, Nathan. Um, you're welcome to request a song, but it just gets made for the members only video. <laughs> so if you, I can't remember if you remember or not, but and I guess it would tell me if you were a member. So if his um, name is is a yeah, color. Yeah, you don't have a logo. Um, but yeah, then it's it's uh, that's only going to go to to the members. It and the only reason, the main reason I do that is because uh, I can't make money. I can't monetize the videos that have songs that are copyrighted in them. So my only way to make money for doing those videos is is to is to ask for donations. So that's why it's kind of a give, or, give and take sort of deal. You ready? Yep. Every time Lissa drives so close to the steering wheel, I cringe. Unfortunately, Dude, Pittsburgh man, she can't, she really doesn't have much of an option because of her tiny little T-Rex arms. Yeah. Your arms more about your feet. It, it is. Yeah. My arms could go much longer and I am okay with driving with my arms fully extended. It's, if I'm able to press the gas all the way down, or the the actually you know what the brake all the way down i need to be able to do that Ooh, uh, actually hold on it's also a comfort thing as well as she gets more comfortable with a the vehicle then she can usually scoot back a little i actually so the seat part of the seat was a little bit at a higher angle and i just lowered that so that my foot can actually rest on the ground so now oh, let's try going back another thing that may help there's a thigh length adjustment so all the way the most I see, I, i'm doing it now okay yeah if you shorten that that might make life a little easier too yeah because it was in long legs setting. long legs mode yep okay so let's go back a little bit further okay got that fully pressed down also i just realized there's a fingerprint scanner on here That's wow cool. yeah how about security there? That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, does that make you feel better? Because I, <laughs> I did push my chair back a lot and my arms are now fully extended. That's actually a lot more comfortable. I like being able to, to lower the front of the seat down. Uh, yes. Because if my thighs are too high, my, my heel can't rest on the actual floor. Right. Joshua John asks, thoughts on the Acura Integra? Um. I don't really see why someone would want a car like that <laughs> that is more expensive. I don't just get the Civic, but I don't know. Maybe it'll drive a whole lot better or something. But to me, I just, I don't know. If, if I want a luxury car, I want it to be luxurious. If I want a sporty car, I want it to be sporty. I don't want much overlap there. So, or at least I don't definitely don't want to pay for the overlap. Maybe some people do. If it sells well, then I'll eat my words. But. I just, I, the Civic is so nice as it is, I just say get the Civic. I think it looks good though. Is the Integra the one that we keep seeing the car commercials for? Is that the new one? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Could be it. It is brand new. How do I raise the, uh... Head up display? Head up display, I, thank you. I don't quite know. So okay. So you just have to leave it. I'll just have to leave it. Yep. I'm actually really super comfortable right now. Um... Yeah, I don't know how to describe it. I'm actually really glad that Pittsburgh Man said something about him cringing when I fix my seat because um, my feet are resting fully on the floor. I'm actually a decent amount far back. I and this is actually a very comfortable drive. It doesn't feel like I'm driving like a giant car. And the 
this isn't really a, that large of a car, but it is a crossover. What is this, a compact, subcompact? Yep, compact. A compact crossover. Mm -hmm. I like this a lot. It's hard not to. It's, it's a good car. It's really hard not to. I love how soft it drives. Mm -hmm. It is so balloony. It's so soft. That's a good way to put it's it. Just, it's so nice. Well, I cool, love that. The cool thing is they're coming to EV70 here soon. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Yeah. They're going to charge so much for that. Ha, huh, charge. Ha. Huh. Moran says, yesterday I, he got a state referee ticket in the Audi R8, which means he's going to have to take it for a checkup. Not sure how they're going to find those turbos. They're hidden under the heat shield. It's impossible to see. Wow. Well, Man, uh, dude, I like California for the weather and the topography and stuff, but he, that, the draconian laws, man. I don't know, Moran. You might need to move. Hank the Mean Man is in the chat. He said, how's it going? burnouts. Nope. No. no burnouts so far today. Maybe if we get some healthy donations, we'll uh, we'll light up the tires because you can you can turn traction and stability control off. I don't know if you could burn out with all four wheels though being all-wheel drive, but nope. All-wheel or four-wheel. Yes. We don't know. Right. Um, <laughs> Mukasa says, sup? Pittsburgh man thought I would like the Integra, being that it's basically a Civic but gussied up. And and yeah, I I, I mean I'm sure I will like it. I'm sure it'll drive great. It'd be cool to own. It just for me that one of the appeals of the Civic is the is the cost. And if the Integra is going to cost a good bit more, why wouldn't I just get something like an Elantra N? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Charlie is all about efficiency. Yes. Speaking of efficiency, Joshua John says, "What would be the best electric car other than a Tesla to get?" Well, I keep liking the Ionic 5, but I haven't driven it yet, so still waiting on Hyundai to get on that. What else? Uh, we liked the XC40 quite a bit. Highway range isn't fantastic for the price. Heck, we even liked the, the Mini uh, electric, but... I love that car. Yeah, small amount of range, I so I gotta live with that. that car. It just has 115, 114 yeah, miles that. of range, and that's nothing. Right. Yeah. Yep. I just really like that, and I was just disappointed. If they made a, if they made an electric Countryman with 250 miles of range on it, the next vehicle, one. I'd buy that. That's awesome. Oh, Josh, uh, Joey sent some money in the cash app. Thanks for letting us know. I'm not really, uh, it, it doesn't really notify me super well. <laughs> so I will check that real quick. Appreciate it. Kick down button. Yeah. Thanks, Joey. Five dollars. That's ten bucks. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Maybe we'll have to do a little launchy launchster before the end of the stream. Okay. The last thing I'll say on the electric cars: the main reason you get a Tesla is if you really, really like the way the car works, even regardless of the, the powertrain. Just the fact that you get right in, you put your foot on the brake. There's no key aspect. It's all your phone. It's very futuristic. I like that. Even if it were a gas car, I would really like that. And the supercharger network is better still than any of the other charging networks. So those are the two main two main reasons to get Tesla. Um, they're not the most comfortable. They're not the most affordable. They're not the best driving necessarily. But there's a lot to like about them. And there are more and more options coming out here soon. Yeah, GM and Honda are partnering up on electric vehicles. That was actually announced a while ago. Green one. Nice. That was actually announced a while ago, but they've kind of made another announcement about that today that it's a little more official, I think. So that'll be neat. Um, awesome. Alyssa, would you purchase a GV70 electric if the price isn't bad? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I would. Well, it would It would depend on how much mileage or, yeah. The range. The range. Yeah. It would depend on that. Um, but I really also do love electric vehicles, and if they make it like this, but electric, mm -hmm. that'd be awesome. I would totally check that out. Yeah. Yeah. So let's head on back down to the airport area there, and we'll flip-flop again and do a little launch as a All thank right. you to Joey. That sounds good to me. I really like this vehicle. It is just very easy to drive. It's very fun to drive. It's very sleek. It makes me feel like a... It makes me feel like a bad MFer, honestly. <laughs>
It really does. Yeah. Um, it's it's very cool. It's a unique style and a newer luxury car brand. I like that about it. Yeah. It's really neat. The price is a little steep. Well, this one we're in 65. Yeah, it's a little steep, but you could easily build one with a smaller engine and most of the features you want for like low 50s. Okay. Yeah, low to mid 50s. That could be that could be a little bit better. Yeah. 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 yeah um, Chris Brower, the other daily motor contributor, is his mother's considering getting one, and his girlfriend's considering getting one. That's very nice. Yeah, and and you can yeah. see why it's it, it's a lot of very good usable space, good rear seat room. Be great if you had kids. Plenty of room for car seats back there. There's cargo. It's got all the features you want. I mean, there's it's really hard to say negative things about this car. Except the uh, fuel economy. Fuel economy, yes, and the yeah. fact that it's just a, it is a bit. Like Alyssa sort of said, balloony, marshmallowy. Really go on to that. Some people would like the more direct feel of something like the Model Y or yeah, or, I can definitely see that. Yeah, a sharper car like that. Regarding uh, fuel economy, I'm getting 16.6 miles right. to the gallon right now, which there are vehicles this size that do much better, yes. right? Yeah. 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 And are they also luxury vehicles? Oh yeah, yeah. You can yeah. get luxury vehicles. Yep, that are more efficient. Right, so we got a few more minutes. We'll walk around, flip flop, launch, and then wrap it up. Okay, that sounds good. Cool. Any other questions you have for me for how I feel about this vehicle? Not really. I mean, you seem comfortable. You seem to enjoy it. Yeah, I'm really comfortable. Your height seems appropriate. I can see decently over the hood. Yeah. Which is nice. Yep. The other thing I will say regarding powertrain is it's it's good. It's not as telepathic smooth as something like a BMW X3, but it's 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 not bad. Bump. Oh, not really, I guess. <laughs> All right. Easy enough. Right. Fiber accents right there. Beautiful white paint. Little headlights. I also appreciate that Genesis didn't feel the need to be all uh, masculine and aggressive and angry yeah. with their styling. It's just classy. It's very classy. Yeah. Door handles don't feel fantastic, but it's minor. Feel a little cheap. Are you getting an Ionic 5 this summer? I sure hope we are, Mukisa. We've been asking Hyundai, but they only have apparently one in the Midwest fleet, and wow. I guess they haven't wanted to give it to us yet. What other cities are in the Midwest fleet? Detroit? Like what other cities are served? Yeah. Detroit, some like Pittsburgh, Buffalo, that neck of the woods, pretty much everywhere in the mid, like the main Midwest, like there's a Chicago fleet as well, but it's much smaller than the Detroit fleet. So a lot of times cars will still have to come out of Detroit, even if they're going all the way out toward Wisconsin, okay. Illinois, Kentucky. The uh, car confections guys are all the way down in Kentucky and they drive cars like eight hours one way to go to deliver them to them and wow. stuff. Yeah. All right, you wanna hop out and do oh, lunch? Sure. This, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll be back. Okay. Bear with the wind, guys. It's quite windy right now. It didn't really sound like well, we have a car coming, so maybe Charlie just rushed it. But that one didn't really sound like the launches that we were feeling on the inside of the car. I wonder if he'll do it again.
Here we go. Very loud. Wow. Okay, I guess we're gonna go with that. <laughs> Was that a legit launch control? I don't think it actually did launch control. Okay. For some reason. Yeah. That's fair. But it would have been about the same. Got it. Okay. It didn't look like it was a legit one. It looked like it was a very soft pull. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, the Pittsburgh man said that didn't sound like anything but air. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll do another one here and see if launch, launch control actually okay. engages. We have to address the Broncos and Bronco Jail as well. Oh, yeah. Broncos and Raptors. Uh, not Raptors. Um, Rangers. Rangers now. I'm glad to not see any uh, Mavericks. Yeah. Mavericks are all going out. All More um, Rangers, actually. Side note, though, there is a recall for our Maverick. Yeah, there actually is. Yeah. They're, um... We, the trailer brake controller may not work properly, so we have to get that right. recalled. That's a pretty red color back there, isn't it? Uh, Ranger. Ooh, and there's an eruption green Bronco. Oh, car coming, we gotta go. I guess we gotta turn stability control off to get launch control. Uh, oh, you ended up turning it back on? Yeah, I thought uh -huh. being in Sport Plus would be enough, but apparently not. Any last things y'all would like to know or see, let us know. The Pittsburgh man said someone needs to donate for a foot race between Alyssa and Charlie. <laughs> what shoes do you have on today? Flats. Little flats. Might stand a chance then. I might stand a chance in them? Jeez. Bradley's car review says the GV70 EV will have a dual motor, 483 horsepower and more than 290 miles of range. I didn't know they already had one in the books. Well, yeah, it's still on its way, but yeah, it's been announced. Yeah. Um, Ron says, I would love to move to Texas, but it's not the smartest move. Leaving California alone will cause my business to shut down. Mm. And right now, that's not a great time for that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little bit of uh, gas prices or gas costs there, Maron, and maybe some uh, insurance payments that yeah. you might need money coming in to take care of. A lot of Californians are moving to Texas, and I find that to be a very interesting move. Maron, can you explain why why Texas? What is the draw to that? Here's a little blind spot camera. I do like that in vehicles. I really do appreciate that. GV70 also has a pretty darn good active lane keeping system when you're on the highway. Kind of a semi-autonomous driving, if you will. Mm. Another view of the broken down R350. Rough. Joey says he's gonna put some uh, uh, songs in the recent members okay. video to add. It's cool. been a while. Yeah, I uh, I combed a few of the songs out of the the members playlist recently, so we can add a few more. The Pittsburgh man says he's also looking to move to Texas. Oh really? Yeah. And Cheap houses, land, and gas. <laughs> My only problem with Texas is the, the government is like too stupid the other direction. So <laughs> you need some sort of some moderation yeah. between idiots on the left and idiots on the right. right. You just need some, some more common sense. We have tires on this. Yeah, it's a neat little ranger. Cool. Decent turning radius. Cool. Yeah. Well, there it is. The 2022 Genesis G with the 3.5 liter. About as nice as they come. Very happy with this one. 
If you do want to see more on it, make sure to keep an eye on Daily Motor for all of our videos. We've got Chris Brower doing fuel economy and a DM test drive, and like I said, all the members only sound test as well. Any last minute comments? Yes, Joshua John is asking if it has a, a hood overlap. Yeah, yep, you can kind of see right here. Yeah, just an interesting, yeah, styling element. Huh. Yep. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks y'all for watching. We'll see you on the next one. We're Charlie and Alyssa with Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.